Hey, what's up guys, Arva here, and welcome back to another episode of my F1 23, my team career mode. This is episode number 34 today for the Italian Grand Prix in season two. If you guys did miss the previous one at the Azerbaijan Grand Prix, then be sure to go check that one out before you see this one where we had a barrier explode our car. The Baku barrier was back, unfortunately. Really took me by surprise. That was in the sprint, and we had to recover in the full Grand Prix, but it was a very difficult car to drive drive and the man in the moment was our teammate Daniel Ricciardo who now sits in third place in the championship having won the sprint on pole for the full Grand Prix and then went on to win the full GP having to overtake uh, both Red Bull cars after a red flag actually got both Red Bulls on the front row without having made a pit stop in that race yet and still Ricciardo managed to just slice through them and get his second win of the season. He's actually won more races this season than I I have um, surprisingly actually so Ricardo really coming to his own and is this you know going to the last third of the season is this his start of a charge to get himself in the frame for the title fight maybe he's still quite a few points off it is very much still the focus on Lando Norris and myself at the top half of the championship but things were very difficult around Baku you know this car we brought an ultimate upgrade for weight reduction a major engine power upgrade but I said in the Baku episode I maybe made the car way too powerful for the downforce it had because we were spinning up the rear tires constantly um so i want to get some downforce on this car asap unfortunately though uh, i don't know it's just it's just uh, amazing timing the morale of my aero department is low right now so there is a higher percentage of failure on a normal and a risky strategy developing a new upgrade but i'm so so desperate to get downforce in this car. We're going for it, we're sending it, we're throwing the dice, we're gambling on a risky upgrade on both the front and the rear major downforce upgrades to try and get them in time for the Italian Grand Prix. It's a 66% chance of failure. I'm really hoping we can be inside the 34% that the upgrade will come in. Let's see, oh no. Oh no, okay, my desperation's got the better of me. I was honestly so, so desperate to get these upgrades in in time for Italy because Baku was so shockingly bad. The car felt like an absolute dog and the desperation's got the better of me. Really, in hindsight now, looking back at it, having, you know, recorded this, um, I mean, I should have just kind of firmed it, gone for the normal upgrade and even that might have failed after Italy. That was my thinking as well. We had a high enough failure chance on the normal upgrade speed that I thought, okay, maybe it'll just fail after Italy anyway, so you may as well go for it. So that's unfortunate. We wasted a lot of R&D there, but I was a very desperate man after how bad Baku was. At least we've got the HQ facility upgrade that came in, so that'll boost Ricardo's awareness, racecraft and focus. And going into Italy, we're still looking pretty good. We're second place in the R&D chart because Red Bull now makes some upgrades into the Italian GP. You can see a lot of people actually making upgrades. Like season one, for whatever reason, it takes the AI so long to wind up on this increased R&D and get the upgrades in. Because now look at the fuel spread from Red Bull down to McLaren. McLaren and Alpine join this top pack. So now you've got Red Bull, Aston, ourselves, Ferrari, Mercedes, Haas, Alpine, McLaren, all kind of within, I think, like 50 percentile points a performance index, which is crazy. Uh, it's probably the tightest uh, kind of grid spread we've had for that little group uh, in the in the entire series, really. So that's going to make things very, very fine, not only into this Grand Prix, but maybe future ones as well. So maybe, you know, other teams, other drivers being a spanner in the works in the fight between myself and Lando Norris. You know, there might be more positions to gain or lose for both of us, and that could spell disaster or absolute adulation for either of us. But we go into this race weekend a little bit wary of how the car felt at Baku. But also, Monza is a very different circuit. Yes, you do have to slow the car down. But unlike Baku, I, there are traction zones. But Monza is very kind of stop in a straight line, turn it and go. Whereas Baku, there are a few of those corners we have to try and almost float the car in mid-apex. And we were finding some difficulty in that section. The traction area is a, is, a, is a concern maybe. But at Monza, generally, if you've got the good engine, you can go well. And we are going well, as we said 
get a great first lap early on in Q1. We went really early because by the time we came in for the in-lap, it started to rain. So we've timed that perfectly as we come in for the in-lap. The droplets come down. So everyone else going out right now may be a bit slower. We've set a lap time P2. Lando's up there in P1. So both of us in top two in the championship, top two right now in Q1, setting down the marker. But the car is looking good. I mean, we're four tenths off Lando. So we'll see how it goes in Q2 and Q3. Ricardo only just makes it through. My God, one tenth and he would have been knocked out. But Alonso and Hamilton both knocked out in Q1. Big Big names, big teams knocked out Q1. I think Alonso and Hamilton both got caught out with the rain, but I must say, Q1, the car didn't feel terrible. We have a small brake system fault, unfortunately, in Q2. That's going to delay us by two minutes. But compared to Baku, this car didn't feel as bad. It was still a little bit like I felt like I couldn't get on the power and maybe as early as I would like to. But it was a lot better than Baku. It didn't feel like I had no confidence in the car. This is the real litmus test, though. Q2, intermediates. The rain that started in Q1 continues into Q2. Wing-wise, unlike in Season 1 where I ran 0-0 wings, I'm running about 6-8 wings, which is quite a big difference to Season 1. Uh, that was also just to help us in terms of the downforce levels, but also I knew there was going to be some rain involved in qualifying, so I wanted to also negate that a little bit. But to be fair, the default setup, I think, around Monza is 8-8 anyway, so I think most of the AI will be on that, so it's not too bad, I don't think. And uh, to my mind, there was just no point trying to risk it with like a stupid 0-0 wing strategy like we did last season. Even though that worked really well for us, I don't think it would work for us this season with the engine power we've got. But thankfully, that uh, intermediate run was not too bad. We just made it through thanks to, I think, there was a bit more rain falling at the end of the session. So the first laps I got in were just about good enough to get through to the top 10 shootout. Along with Ricardo, both Red Bull cars make it in. Uh, Russell through. Both, uh, both Salvers are through. Joe Guan Yu in P6, Hulkenberg P10, and then Gasly's Alpine. Surprised to see uh, the, the two Saubers in, to be honest. And Ferrari looking strong. Leclerc P1 here, obviously in front of the adoring Tifosi. Let's see how it's going to go in the top 10 shootout. We've only got one set of intermediates left because I used two sets in Q2. But obviously the second set was kind of ruined a little bit by the heavier rainfall. It's not time for full wet, but I feel like it may be by the end of the session so I think this will be it our one and only flying lap potentially or maybe two consecutive laps because by the time we come in I think it will be time for full wets right at the end of the session so this is where it really matters slight bit of twitch of oversteer unfortunately through parabolic as we go to the line to get up into P3 which is very solid I would take that to be honest as we go for this second flyer, purple in the second sector, but we make marginal gains. We've lost a bit of time now, going waywards. Oh, and the car snaps, and the track bites us on the exit of Ascari. I tried to float the car in a bit too much. We got on the curb. At this point, I was up. I was purple. Then I lost all the time here with this slide. Then that went into a different slide in the, dip in the other direction, and I just could not catch it. And it's a crash that will see us end qualifying in, Q in P4. To be fair, that's still very, very solid. Compared to Baku, I will take that on the second row alongside my championship rival. Pierre Gasly, though, take a bow. As of late, Gasly's been doing some insane results. He got that podium in Portimao, remember? And now he's here on the first row in Monza with his pal Charles Leclerc on pole position. Ricardo has a qualifying to forget in P10. He's going to have to make up positions in the race. And it's a great qualifying for Sauber as well in P6 and 7 with Joe Guan Yu and Nico Hulkenberg. But for us, uh, it's going to be a dry race, I think. And we actually were going much better in Q1 relative to Q2 and Q3. So I think, uh, thankfully... Maybe not having those downforce upgrades won't be a massive hindrance. It seems like a Monza just a bit more geared towards actual straight line speed. We've just got so much of an advantage there. Unlike Baku, it's negating the problems we have with traction maybe and just getting on the power and general downforce level. So hopefully we can actually turn things around and very much not have a race like we had at Baku. From the second row, we have a good chance of a podium and with a slipstreaming, you never know. You never know. Let's go to the grid. A difficult race awaits these drivers here in Monza, but glory awaits too at the Italian Grand Prix. With top speeds reaching 215 miles per hour, 
only a few places can challenge Monza's crown as the fastest track in Formula One. Hard-breaking zones going into the three chicanes make up the majority of the 11 corners on this 3.6-mile circuit. And just in case the slipstream wasn't enough, two DRS zones will help encourage some close action. So with the race not far away from starting, here's what today's grid rundown looks like. A fantastic effort from Charles Leclerc yesterday, and it's put him on pole. And it's Pierre Gasly in P2. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Norris, the owner driver, Sainz, Joe, Hulkenberg, Verstappen, Russell, Ricardo, Sargent, Ocon, Perez, Stroll, Liam Lawson, Fernando Alonso, Sonoda, Oscar Piastri, Albon, Hamilton, Magnussen, and Valtteri Bottas begins the race from the back of the grid. It's almost time for those five red lights to go out then. Let's see who can prevail today. It's just about time to go down to the track for the beginning of the race, but before we do, Anthony Davidson, what types of strategy do you think we can expect for today's event? Well, there's a lot that both the driver and the team have to keep in mind when going into a race. The tyres, fuel, energy recovery systems, the list goes on and on. But I think the key to today's victory will come down to the pit stop strategy. Come in too soon and you might find yourself needing more than one stop. Too late and you're putting yourself at a disadvantage by spending longer on worn tyres. From the second row, we know we have half a chance here of maybe even bagging the win, depending on the slipstreaming. But obviously, the main focus is the man on the same row as Lando Norris, our championship rival closest to us in terms of points. We're now trailing him. So first and foremost, we need to try and get him into turn one. And then we'll see what we can do about the Alpine. I uh, didn't expect to be saying that uh, in second place. And then Leclerc in P1. And hopefully, like in Q1, this car is feeling a bit more back to normal. I don't know whether it's just Baku. I did see a comment below on the last video saying Baku just felt a bit weird for them last time out. I think also it's more of a case of Monza just being a little bit more calmer for us with this downforce issue with the engine power. I think next episode will be very interesting to see how the car feels. Will it feel more like Baku? Will it feel more like it hit? It has done so far today, but obviously that's a, still a question mark because we haven't done the race yet. That's coming up. Let's just hope it was like in Q1 where we were in the top frame for pace. As we get ready to go to five red lights at the Temple of Speed here at Monza, the Italian Grand Prix, Ferrari on pole. Firing lights are out and we are underway. Gasly with a good start. Norris a slow one. We're catching up to the Frenchman. Leclerc goes so defensive to block off the Alpine. We're boxed in. Easy on the brakes. Gasly going for the lead of the race in the Alpine. Lando jumps the curb and almost whacks into us on the outside there. That could have been a bit of a controversial bit of contact as Lando squeezes us and gives us no room on the right-hand side there and is adamant about keeping this third place. It's all as it was on the grid. It's still Leclerc in the lead. Gasly second, but we now get round the outside of the Red Bull to get in to third place and ahead of our championship rival. Ricardo's made some places up as well. He's up to P8s from P10, so good to see there. But look at this. Gasly and Leclerc already three seconds ahead of us because of the fighting myself and Lando are doing. And Gasly's really keeping up with Leclerc here. He's actually gaining on it. Gaining on it in a straight line. I mean, we saw that last episode. The Alpine looked pretty damn slippery in a straight line. I don't know where they, where they sit in the engine chart or, you know, drag reduction or what, but Alpine is looking mighty in the hands of Gasly. I mean, Ocon's down in P12, so this is all just Pierre Gasly's doing. What a season he is having. Bit of a breakout season for him with that podium at Portimao. This result here and a couple of decent, consistent top five results as of late. And he takes the lead now onto lap two as we all watch. Watching Ricardo battling Russell and Verstappen and Joe swapping positions. Gasly trying to take the lead for Alpine at the Italian Grand Prix. Not meant to be on this lap. Leclerc takes the lead back, but Gasly is there to fight as we see uh, Verstappen battling with Joe and he overtakes the Sauber to go P6. But Norris uh, also just got overtaken by Sainz. Sorry, uh, we missed that as I was focusing on Gasly. But yeah, Lando's behind Sainz now. So Sainz is the one chasing me, uh, chasing me down and Verstappen is actually closing up to his teammate. So really poor, poor opening two laps for our championship rival is on to lap two. Oh, we've got a rear wing failure 
for the DRS fault. So thankfully our DRS wasn't open and it faulted that way. I mean, to be fair, that actually may, may have given us some speed, actually. You know, one time can the DRS break when it's open for us. Uh, but no, we have no DRS. That's not a bother right now, to be honest, because I'm P3 not inside DRS of Ghastly, and science is chasing me down. So even if I did have DRS working, I wouldn't have DRS right now as we go on to lap three once it gets activated. As science going for the overtake, we're deploying a bit of battery, but also no, not wanting to overuse it, because that's the trick here at Monza. If you overuse it to defend, you could be in a bit of a pickle. So we're playing it smart. We kind of let science through, knowing that we can get this re-slipstream, this re-overtake opportunity through the curve into the heart of the middle of this circuit is look at the speed we're gaining here science squeezes us a little bit there but we keep committed to the inside and then it's a bit of chicken to see who's gonna let off through that chicane both of us actually give each other quite a lot of room to be fair quite a respectful battle between myself and carlos science as we get back up into p3 but all the while this is helping Gasly and leclerc pull away by now four seconds as science comes back at us once again into parabolica easy into the right hander to give science some room but also knowing it's actually probably better to be behind him down this straight to re-overtake him. At this point, unfortunately, we may have to say goodbye at thinking about the top two, unless there's a safety car. You know, they're so far away, and on the F1 game especially, at Monza, when you're this far away from them, and in a battle of your own, it's very, very tough as Ricardo makes a double overtake on the two Red Bulls, but one of them just had a bit of contact. It's Verstappen without a bit of his front wing end play, and so the Red Bulls in a bit of a disaster class here at Monza. Let's look at a replay, though, because... As we are focused on our own battle with science. Look at Ricardo coming in. Supreme confidence. Obviously the boosted awareness in racecraft now. And it's the double overtake on the Red Bulls. You love to see it. And then here. I mean, oh, that is just so, so bad. Verstappen just runs into the back of Ricardo. Lando wasn't even involved. He was just watching that happen. And so Verstappen's miserable season continues uh, here in season two and Lando is the lead Red Bull but both of them aren't looking too great here in terms of race pace as Sainz once again goes for a re-overtake now this time into Ascari we're side by side he goes a bit wide on the curve we go around the outside and just leave him all the room in the world not to make any contact with him and trying to break the toe and Ricardo all of a sudden now is in the slipstream so this has been a fantastic first opening laps for Daniel Ricardo. he's gone from P10 to what may, may now be P4 nearly nearly gets the Ferrari as you can see on the top left ladder Gasly back into the lead so so far as we've been focused on our own battles and Ricardo's battles Gasly and Leclerc they've just been swapping positions left right and center as we watch Ricardo power pass signs with DRS showing that this car is working well and thankfully it's working well for both our cars not just Ricardo but Ricardo in a fine bit of form actually overtakes me here despite deploying ERS for quite a bit of that straight Ricardo just gets the jump on us here and to be fair, I don't put up too much of a fight because I can use him now to slipstream and stay ahead of science. And I was kind of hoping that we could maybe play a bit of teamwork here to slipstream each other or he could pull me along if he's quicker than me to maybe catch up to the top two. Right now, you can see here, kind of just boxing science in, easy going, because I want to stay behind Ricardo, because it seems like he's quicker in Sector 2, kind of like all the AI were quicker than me in Sector 2 here at Monza in Season 1. So I thought Ricardo could maybe pull us along, but two laps later, we've not really made any inroads on Gasly and, and, and we're just falling away from Ricardo a little bit. So I think, okay, we tried it for two laps, trying to see if Ricardo can drag us along like a horse to our carriage. Didn't really work. So now let's just try and go for the max position, which is P3. So let's go for this overtake on our teammates and hopefully both of us can stay ahead of Sainz as Leclerc and Gasly, you can see in the top left, continue to just swap positions every single lap as we go powering past Ricardo. This car is so rapid at Monza down that straight. So much so that it bottoms out in eighth gear. Like the engine note changes because the car, I think, stalls a little bit. I think the floor is stalling as we go to the end of the uh, end of the straight here because we're going so quick. Ricardo back ahead of us just before Parabolic on lap nine. Again, we'll go for the re-overtake and at this point, we're just kind of using each other to stay ahead of science. Unfortunately, I think gas and Leclerc, they're just in their own universe right now, doing the exact same thing, slipstreaming each other as we get past Ricardo for the second time now on the main straight. And again, we look back behind this and thankfully Sainz is staying put in P5. At this stage, I think both Red Bulls have already pit early 
or at least Verstappen has, and so they're really not even a bother. So Red Bull having an absolute calamity of a, of a Grand Prix today as Ricardo for the third time overtakes this and will probably go for another swap maybe after Parabolica, although we're a little bit wide into Ascari. You saw lost a bit of time mid-corner, having to go a little bit defensive and weaving about to try and break the toe from Sainz, and he's as close as he's ever been. So is the Ferrari maybe a threat now? He's actually very, very close. All three of us have dropped a gap, though, to the next cars, which is Ocon, who's now into P6. So both Alpines are actually looking great in this part of the season as we are looking to get past Ricardo. But Sainz is now precariously so near to us. We go for the move. Ricardo puts us on the grass. He squeezes us a bit too much there. I wanted to go to the uh, inside. Ricardo made a late move and we had to dip a tyre into the grass to keep it going. And I got scared off the road a little bit. And now we have to re-overtake Sainz because he was able to make the double or try to make the double overtake. And instead now, we get the uh, job done on him after the first two turns. On the outside of Ricardo, just can't make the move. Didn't feel confident enough to make the dive around the outside. But that was a little bit sketchy from Rick Bobby. But uh, he maybe didn't see me coming. But yeah, Ferrari and Sainz getting a little bit frosty and close to us for comfort. But um, oh, Alpine genuinely looking amazing. I mean, Gasly leads the race right now as he comes into the pits. Leclerc is in. We're going to come in. Ricardo stays out. Sainz as well. So hopefully we can get an undercut on both of them. But Ocon is ahead of Russell. He was P12 on like lap two. So in about, you know, 11 laps, 10 laps, he's gone from P12 to P6 in this race, which is very impressive. Gas leads the way. Oh, Alpine, like all of a sudden a dark horse in this season to like be challenging for great positions. I don't know where it's come from because obviously uh, we saw on the R&D chart, Alpine did improve. They're very close now to everyone, but so are McLaren, so are Haas, so are Mercedes, you know, so why aren't they looking that great so you know just both alpine drivers maybe they're the actual drivers themselves just higher focus just working well i don't know whatever combo the alpines look pretty threatening here around monza especially ghastly though still keeping up with the leclerc very impressed but we're now out on medium tires of course on lap 12 we've uh, we're actually behind verstappen because he's got an undercut on us having pit early for that damage but he's on soft so i think he's doing a two stop maybe today which is absolute ropes for him as alonso bottas stroll whole gaggle of cars come in so thankfully we're not gonna have to slice through that traffic and instead we overtake the staff and there's that bottoming out you can hear on the engine as we close up to Liam Lawson. Can't quite make a move on the Williams, but we are going to squeeze out Verstappen and then go for the move on Lawson later into the lap. But we are ahead of Sainz by 1.4. Ricardo behind him, so the undercuts work. We've gained about a second or more hitting one lap earlier and that's going to give us a little bit of breathing room in this race as we go across the line to finally overtake the last couple of cars to get up into p4 i think russell's the only one yet to pit so a bit well, once he pits it'll be leclerc in the lead Gasly second myself third ricardo fourth Sainz fifth and you can see we've got 2.6 seconds now the gap and that just gives us a little bit of room just to relax a little as Leclerc leads the way on lap 16. Gasly second, like I said, half under half a second, still there. Constantly putting the Monogas driver under pressure here. We're in third, 3.5 seconds now ahead of Ricardo, who just re-overtook Sainz. So they're swapping positions. Ocon P6, like I said, doing amazingly to recover from outside the top 10. Russell P7, Lando P8 with no race pace whatsoever. The Red Bulls, even did you know away from Verstappen's damage they just don't have race pace here they're really struggling they've got the best air I think on the grid but they don't have the best engine or the chassis and it's really showing today around this circuit as on lap 20 four laps later Ricardo has caught up to me now as uh, him and Sainz have been slipstreaming each other and they've been using each other to get quicker and quicker and to be fair in no man's land alone at Monza kind of just losing a bit of time because I've got no one to slipstream and then you just lose a bit of time in sector two because Ricardo definitely has been quicker in sector two but we're going to go for the re-overtake as Ricardo goes defensive that's going to box Sainz in and hopefully Ricardo can get back through for P4 I think he will he'll be side by side with Sainz or we get back ahead of our teammate and Sainz but they're side by side they'll continue to fight so much so that by the end of lap 21 well we're focusing on Gasly closing up to Leclerc for an overtake but watch the gap from Sainz to myself you just saw there it grew from seven tenths to now 
now it's grown by a second or more to nearly two seconds because they're fighting so much. Ridiculous how much time you can lose around Monza fighting a car. So we go from being overtaken by Ricardo to now having a two second gap to him again as we see Pierre Gasly get into the lead of the race not for the first time, and they'll probably swap again. But right now, he is in the lead, and we're getting to the last couple of laps. Lap 24, he still leads the way from Leclerc. But for us, Sainz has caught up to us. He's shaking off Ricardo a bit. Ricardo is actually under threat from Russell and Ocon, as Sainz is on the outside at Scari. It's very fine. Oh, he comes back on circuit from the curb. Very dangerously, I must say. If I didn't take evasive action going wider in the middle of that corner, that would have been an absolute horrendous crash there, because he had Ricardo Russell knock on also behind and look at that a swarm of bees pretty much behind me all trying to attack me is there two by two Ricardo next to Sainz Russell next to Ocon as we go down this straight lap 25 three laps to go we're aggressively trying to break the slipstream Ricardo's pretty much bump drafting Carlos Sainz into turn one Sainz with the move to the inside we go defensive and just manage to get the right racing line to stay ahead and compromise Sainz's line and Ricardo again is now back up behind him but Ricardo doesn't look as punchy as he was in the first stint and Russell and Ocon are now a threat to him behind potentially Ricardo's actually having a go at Sainz though but Sainz will have that covered but uh, you're going to see in sector two Ricardo just drops a bit of time and again here you can see there Ricardo behind he's actually closer to Russell and under attack by the Mercedes car whereas Sainz is now away and having a go at me is Russell oh nearly nearly makes a bit of contact with Ricardo into the final corner as we go on towards this second last lap of the Grand Prix again moving about trying to break the toe but the Ferrari just has the overspeed we don't have much battery left 6% only, so Sainz gets ahead of us into turn one. We're going to have to have supreme confidence in ourselves to re-overtake him here, because I could have maybe gone side by side with him at turn one, but I thought, no, let's trust the car, let's trust the pace, and here we go, again, going for the move just before the next chicane, Sainz, oh, <laughs> Sainz does not budge on that racing line. We have to dip a tyre into the grass to keep it going there. He hits the kerb, and we go around the outside, going to squeeze out uh, uh, signs to the next corner and go to the inside and that's going to invite Ricardo back in to maybe make a move so we're just about hanging on to this Ricardo trying his best on the outside but maybe P4 not quite the Ferrari stays but as Leclerc and Gasly are side by side now going in towards the last lap Gasly is shoved wide bit of contact there and Leclerc gets into P1 onto the last lap who's going to win this as it's nearly three wide between Ricardo or on and Russell. Like I said, Sainz pulling away. Ricardo. I don't know if he's got a little bit of damage or what, but he's not looking as quick. And Ocon overtakes him on the last lap to get up into P5. Ricardo's still fighting him though. Can he re-overtake him to still keep a top 5 finish in Monza? Ocon, this would be a brilliant recovery for him, but this would be a good uh, defensive work from Ricardo just to keep P5 with clearly a bit of a struggling car. Maybe tyre wear, I'm not too sure, but Ocon gets it. Ocon up to P5 from P12 earlier in, uh, in the race, remember. So a great drive for him whilst his teammate is up there in second place. And they're going through to the last corner. This is it. Gasly with the move maybe. But Sainz is overtaking us as well. We re-overtake him. Gasly in the last corner. Bit of contact. Gets the elbows out. It's going to be Pierre Gasly into the last corner. Getting the overtake for the Italian Grand Prix. It's his second ever win at Monza. He won in 2020. He wins here in 2024 in-game season two of my team career mode. Gasly is a race winner once again and we managed to hold off Sainz in Ascari with a bit of an elbow out but uh, there was a lot of elbows going on there because there was definitely a bit of contact with Gasly and Leclerc um, but what a result a shock win from, from Alpine where has this come from from Gasly and Alpine and with that we wrap up yet another incredible Grand Prix weekend Tell me, Ant, how do they manage to achieve this win? Well, tyre management probably played quite a large role in the outcome of this one. As ever, it's not just about speed, it's all about maintaining that speed consistently over a stint, over a race distance. So being able to keep up the lap times while still being smooth on the controls and gentle on the tyres, that's really where the race was won today. Welcome then to the podium, our top three drivers, 
What a great effort from them today in a very difficult race. This is a sight I did not expect to see. Alpine aren't even in the top five in the R&D chart. Yes, the grid spread's close now, but this is all Gasly's AI, I think. I mean, Ocon did show the Alpine car does genuinely have some good pace because he recovered from P12 to P5. But Gasly winning this race against this Ferrari, which we know this Ferrari has been bloody quick at times this season with the way Leclerc won Portimao and the pace they've shown at times. But this is uh, this is just come out of nowhere. Wow, what a breakout season this has been for Gasly on this game with those podiums, the top fives recently, and now a win at Mo he must be loving Monza now. That's two wins in his uh, in his career in this alternate F1 universe of ours in this career mode series. For us, it's third place. Whilst Lando Norris is not even in the points. The staff and P11, so neither Red Bull scored any points today. It's been a howler of a race for them. They had no race pace. Forget the damage that Verstappen had anyway. Lando just didn't have any, uh, enough pace. He got, he was pretty good in qualifying, but that's maybe because of the wet weather we had in Q2 and Q3. So Red Bull slipped back down to third place in the constructors. Ferrari a second, but we actually bridge up to 40 points now to Ferrari. So in the constructors, we're looking a lot better now. And that's all down to Alto, to be fair. We've got to mention Ricardo's, you know, form. You know, even though he got overtaken by Ocon, it's still great to have him scoring those points. Where and Red Bull aren't scoring any points, basically. But it's still very tight in the, in the Drivers' Championship. Seven points only now between myself and Lando. But we're back ahead. Leclerc up into third place in the Drivers' Championship. It's hard to call, but in, through all of this chaos and shock race winners, we're just chipping away, getting enough points to keep the kind of uh, momentum rolling, as it were, in the Drivers' Championship as we go into the last third of this season. Now, guys, if you have enjoyed that, though, the shock winner, Pierre Gasly at Monza for this second in time then be sure to hit that like button let me know what you thought in the comments below if you're around here then do get subscribed for weekly formula on content i'll see you guys next time goodbye